Hi, I am Ravi, Ravi Handa. I am the founder of the website handakafunda.com. We have various courses for CAT and other exam preparations. And in this series of videos, I am talking about the complete CAT syllabus. Now, we have had a few videos in the series. I recommend that you watch those videos first. In those videos, we have talked about what the sectional breakup of the various sections is, what does quantitative aptitude consist of, what does verbal aptitude consist of, and we have also discussed in detail the various topics which are there, number system, algebra, arithmetic, geometry, and today we are going to talk about modern maths. It's an important part of the CAT syllabus, quant to be precise, and we'll dig in a little deeper today. So first of all, what does modern maths even mean? Now, modern maths is not a term that you normally encounter. Arithmetic, algebra, geometry are things that uh, even a non-CAT aspirant would be very well aware of. On the other hand, number system is something that most CAT aspirants or at least most competitive exam aspirants are aware of, which deals with number theory and stuff, a common part of various exams. On the other hand, modern maths is not technically even a term which is used by most people, most books. This is by some of the CAT trainers. What does it contain? Well, at least for me, when I'm talking about modern maths, it consists of set theory, a little bit of binomial theorem, permutation and combination, probability and sequence in series, which is sometimes also known as progressions. Now, let's look at what do they exactly mean. Now, in set theory, basically, you should be comfortable with Venn diagrams. That's really, really important because if you are comfortable with Venn diagrams, you can essentially solve any set theory question. Max to max, two sets or three sets is what you should be very comfortable with. You should also know how to solve a set theory question if there are four sets which are involved. I think it was in CAT 2013 probably is when a question on four sets was asked. And other than that, I do not remember a single instance of a question on four sets being asked in CAT. So it is something that you should know. If you know, good enough. And if you don't know, it's not that big a deal. It is not something that is going to make or break your chances. In the past many, many years, only one set of questions or only one question, so to say, has been asked on it. And something which a lot of people get scared by is the maxima minima type of questions. See, maxima minima type of questions dealing with set theory, if they are asked, they will be based on very, very basic algebra. That is a three set diagram will be given to you. There will be a couple of variables and then you will have to maximize or minimize some of the values. You are not going to get a question in which there are six exams and then how many maximum people would have passed in four of them and how many would have failed in five of them. All that is way too complicated to be asked in CAT. It is not something that you should worry about. As a matter of fact, maxima minima of sets in itself is not something that you should be worried about. What you should be worried about, what you should be concerned about is just solving questions on two sets and three sets. And obviously, let's say if you figure out while solving them that x plus y is 10, then what is the maximum value of x that is possible? That is 10. What is the minimum value of x that is possible? That is 0. That is all that you need to know when it comes to maxima, minima and set theory. It is not something that you should sweat over and how should I solve those sort type of questions. Basic algebra and if you are clear with two set or three set Venn diagrams, that's all you need. Do not waste your time on complicated stuff. Binomial theorem is something that comes in very, very handy. Uh, maybe if you spend half an hour on it, that's good enough just to understand how this works and what a few of the applications can be. But this becomes very important for the topics that follow. Say, for example, permutation and combination and probability. Now, this is something that most students have been really, really scared of. Say, in 11th and 12th, a lot of them chose to skip it because they found it way too complicated. Well, yes, probability is indeed a complicated topic. No doubt about it. 
permutation combination can get really really scary when you have to consider a lot of cases and then solve a question out but this is not your class 12th exam this is not your engineering entrance exam this is cat for cat let me tell you what you need to know with respect to permutation combination and probability you need to know three things what is ncr when should it be used what is npr when should it be used and the probability of any event is favorable by total these are the only three formulas that you need to know and you need to know how to apply them anything which is more complicated than this will not be asked in cat cat ask questions on very basic very fundamental difficulty level you should be good with counting things you should be good with considering let's say some of the basic cases when zero is at the first position or zero is at the last position and stuff like that that is all that you are going to need complicated formulas on conditional probability or stuff like d arrangement or stuff like n plus r minus 1 c r minus 1 well it is good to know it does clarify your concepts but a question on that will not be asked in cat again probability is probably a topic on which a lot of people waste a lot of time in my opinion probability should be the least important topic rarely do you get questions on probability and even if you do get questions on probability they are going to be very basic application of essentially permutation and combination questions so do not sweat thinking about probability very basic stuff is going to be asked as a matter of fact i honestly believe that if you want to solve a permutation and combination question in the exam you need to put in maximum of 3 hours to actually prepare for pnc and probability combined after that it is how much clarity of thought you have that is going to make a difference it is not that if you solve hundreds of questions on permutation and combination you will be able to solve the question in the exam or you will not be able to solve the question in the exam it simply depends how much clarity of thought you have and for building that clarity of thought for understanding the basic concepts no more than 3 hours are required so think about it when you are surfing on a facebook group or maybe you are going through a pagal guy forum and you see a complicated question on permutation and combination or on probability where the explanation is huge sometimes stretching up to 20 lines in 5 cases well that's just someone showing off that is not required for cat and you might find one of my answers there my, one of my answers will be there because i am also showing off but that's not for you i'm showing off to attract people to prove to people how much i know you don't need to do that as a teacher i need to prove my capabilities you don't need to prove your capabilities you need to clear the question in cat and for that the difficulty level is very very low on the other hand if the amount of time that you are planning to invest in pnc and probability if you split that time and you put it in sequence in series or progression sort of topics you are going to benefit a lot more typically a few questions are always asked on progressions they are often based more than anything on pattern recognition or very simplistic formulas and concepts of ap and gp and stuff like that not very complex stuff no fancy formulas so if you are good at pattern recognition as to what is going on and know the basic formulas of ap and gp you should be good i hope with this particular video i have been able to clarify what is relevant in modern maths and what is not relevant just to summarize set theory is very important you will get questions on set theory in cat but they will mostly be on two sets and three sets when diagram four sets is not very important but still it's good to know something that you can learn in 15 minutes maxima minima absolutely useless you should be comfortable with basic algebraic ideas pnc and probability just know the basic formulas which i have listed here and you should be good to go for sequence in series apgp and pattern recognition is all that you are going to need hope you learn something from this video thank you